What's going on, people? It's Mr. Dog back again for the end of game review. Um, <laughs> where should I start? Where should I start? Um, I, I, first of all, I've got Watford fan. Sam, how you doing, Sam? I'm really good today, actually, after that win. Uh, yeah. You can, tell, you can tell you smiled. My, my face <laughs> is. Um, yeah, we're, 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 flying. We're, we're flying at the moment. Uh, genuinely up to second today into the automatic promotion spot. So, yeah, really good day all round for us. On uh, at Watford, uh, um, so where should we start? Like, uh, let me start with Watford. Like, how happy are you with three points today? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely massive, uh, particularly with, with Brentford not playing and um, and us being the early kickoff. We had a real opportunity to kind of cement ourselves in those automatic promotion spaces, and, and we did that. And I thought it was a uh, it was a weird performance because we weren't at our absolute best, but I didn't think we really had to be. There were a couple of moments where you kind of scared us, but we never really had to get out of those lower gears. But yeah, we we, we controlled the first half and I thought that kind of killed the game off. A lot of our players look really dangerous against uh, some of, you know, perhaps your lower quality players. Uh, I look at, uh, for example, Bong, I thought Saw absolutely destroyed him today. So mm. yeah, it was, a, it, it was a good all-round performance from us and massive three points. Mm. I was talking about that, that goal, I thought our defender was absolutely like I think was it Saar who took who just yeah Saar's Saar's cross yeah cut the mick out of um, Bong and then Sam because Sam I think Sam got injured yeah but then your left your left back who scored a compass what's his name again the left back uh, Adam Messina that's the Adam Messina and um, he scored but from your point of view like how bad was it for us to defend him <laughs> it was it was it was really bad because. We were kind of talking about it on our match reaction, how that uh, Andre Gray made a run to the front post and all of your players kind of forgot about Adam Messina being completely free on the other side of the box and he was able to drill at home. Um, I thought personally James Garner should have done more to get across and block the shot. I thought Knockart ridiculous for leaving him completely free and I know Samba's probably injured but I'd say nine times out of ten the goalkeeper should be doing better. So... Yeah, really, really poor defending, and I'd be fuming if it was from, from a Watford perspective. So I can't mm. imagine how you're feeling as well. I'm fuming. I'm, I'm, I'm fuming. Yeah. Like I was about to ask you a question. The ex players like uh, Gardner, Murray came to you back. How did you rate them today, Flynn Forest? So I thought um, stuff with James Garner. He was he was much better than than what, what he was against us. I think you know it's been well documented. He was he was really poor. And eventually just completely fell out of favour. And that's why uh, Man United terminated the loan. And he's now at Nottingham Forest doing relatively well. A uh, couple of really tidy touches in the middle. And for us, it was it was a weird game because I don't know if you noticed, but we only played with one central midfielder. And then in the other two... I never noticed. Spots, I never yeah. noticed. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was meant... Jao Pedro, who's our top scorer up front this season, was playing in a defensive midfield role. It's absolutely mental. And the fact they were able to control the midfield today, I think, you know, showed that Garner perhaps didn't have his best game, but he certainly looked much more comfortable on the ball and off the ball than he did with us. And mm. Glenn Murray, I was saying to you just off air before, he looked incredibly isolated and, you know, he, he looked... It wasn't a tie performance, but I thought our, our midfielders never really were able, uh, our defenders, sorry, never really had anything to worry about with him. So, yeah, they, they, it was it was good to see them back at Vicarage Road and, you know, carrying on their careers. But I'm just happy they didn't really cause us any problems. Mm. And I, I've seen uh, in, in my watch along, ex Derby player who's, he ran the show. Brilliant. So and, good. Yeah. Um, and I was saying, like, Joe Gardner, he's, he's a type of player, that, like, he didn't have a sniff. You didn't have a yeah. and, like how did you rate whose performance on midfield? Will Hughes was effectively he was out for long periods at the start of the season. I don't think he played in the return fixture at the City mm. Ground when we drew nil nil with you. And then he came back into the team and was playing left mid, right mid, and, and never really looked too comfortable uh, in the team. And then since we've switched to the four three three and put him into the middle of the park, he's pretty much controlled every single game. We've won six games out of seven since he's been there. We battered teams. Uh, battered teams are there. I, I think today was probably even a bit more up for it with it being against Nottingham Forest than him growing up as a Derby fan. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was really good. But you know, as much as I, I say that you know Hughesy did have a good game today and he did control the midfield, I didn't think he was ever really under threat, um, and I didn't really have to. Not a case of him not trying, but it, it wasn't really a high quality Forest midfield. They had like, to be up against the thing like. 
huge. Like he ran the show, but I was talking to my colleague Craig, and the, our midfield was awful. Like yeah, Ryan Yates, awful. And I'm yeah, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a massive fan of Ryan Yates because he gets criticised from, from fellow Forest fans, and our midfield was awful. And who's he, he didn't have to, he didn't have to break sweat yeah. to do it was, anything. Yeah, it was a really quiet kind of Will Hughes performance. A lot of the time he goes under the radar when he just you know puts his foot in, wins a lot of tackles in there, but. He never really had to, you know, particularly in the first half, I just thought the ball just kept on coming back to us and we just kept on putting it down, particularly down the right with Saar and Kika Feminia and we just kept on going down that over and over again and never really was troubled. But yeah, he absolutely ran the show today. Mm. As a Watford fan, like, how bad was Forrest today? How bad? Give, give me your honest opinion. And people in the comments as well. Say- give, give, people in the comments as well. How bad were Forest today? Give me uh, out of ten as well. So sorry, Sam. I would, I would say I've seen I've seen worse this season that we've played against. I look at you know in, not a worse team, but in terms of performances against us, you know we hammered Bristol City six 0 for Wickham midweek. we were, were probably worse than you lot as well. But it was the fact that you didn't really offer anything at all, and I didn't really look at any of your plays thinking right. I'm worried that this could cause something. There were a couple of set pieces towards the end that looked dangerous, but. Overall, I was never really scared that, you know, Knockart would get on the ball and do something or, or Glenn Murray would get a chance. And for that, I look I look at that as a poor performance because mm. if I was a Forest fan, I'd be like, why am I watching this? Am I, am I all right to swear or not? Yeah, like, feel free, I'm feel like, free. I, 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 yeah, I'd be feel like, why free. am I watching it? Yeah, well, why am I watching this shit every week? Like, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> yeah, well, yes, no, it's, it's, I, it's all right. I know, I know, I, I know I, do you know what? I've watched quite a bit of Forest this season. I, I really enjoyed the game last week against Derby where I thought, I thought you got better. And I think when Chris Hewson did come in, there was kind of uh, an improvement in the form. But I think probably for Forest, it's just about getting to the end of the season and going again because I think your, your team ultimately is not good enough. I think Chris Hewson arguably got it wrong today as well. And uh, yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's going to be a long process, I think, for you lot. Who, who, who's your star player? Like we mentioned, who? But who? Like what player? Like I know, as a Forest fan, Watford didn't break sweat. They didn't didn't. There was no trouble. Even your keeper, he could, yeah. you like your keeper, your keeper could just stood on the post for the whole ninety minutes. And like, who? What player stood out for you today? I know, but it was, it's going to be a difficult. One. Just like yeah, yeah. For, like, for, for Watford or for Forest? Watford. Uh for Watford. Um. I think he's the obvious one. I think the other two midfielders. I think I was uh, I was really happy with them uh, with uh, Jao Pedro and Philip Zinkenov because they weren't playing in their natural positions and they you know they put in a real shift in there and you know they helped Will Hughes control the midfield. So for me, I thought they set up. But my man of the match today was Evan Messina, not just because of the goal, but I think the fact that. He relatively controlled Knockart quite well throughout the game, particularly in the first half. He got his foot in quite a few times and wound Knockart up, I think, quite a bit, yeah. which is quite enjoyable to watch from a what perspective. <laughs> and also and also because I think Messina has been one of those players who who has been criticised quite a bit uh, from a Watford perspective and kind of that weak point in the team. So to see him doing well today, I, I'm really happy. So he was my, you know, probably my Watford man of the match. And also, I don't know if you saw, we had a young kid come on, Joseph Hungbo. It was yeah. absolutely brilliant. Something like mm. 18, 19 years old and fantastic. So really good to see him out there as well. Mm. Oh, it was funny, like, where's, like, I know Ben Foster's injured, but where's yeah. Troy Deeney? Is he injured Troy's as well? out as well. Yeah, Troy's out. Um, he's it's another one of love. You've got strength in debt as well. And, like... and, and, and do you know what? But you say that, it's just mental in the championship how much it can change because we've only got one fit central midfielder at the moment. I mean, Carlos Sanchez came in this week as an emergency because... We've got Tom Cleverley tore his ACL midweek. He's out for, it's not a serious one, but he's out for about two months. Mm-hmm. Um, Dan Gosling's out at the moment with a hamstring injury. Chalabal Dan, is suspended. Dan Gosling is, is, is a strange one because he was that close for joining Forest. Do you know the story about that? No, no. Was it what in January or? Yeah, yeah. Basically, he was that close for joining Forest. But mm. I don't know if you're aware, Harry Harter must have told him don't join Forest. And the, <laughs> next day, and the next day, he's joined Watford. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, know, Harry Hart is another one. Really don't like him uh, from his from his Bournemouth game, uh, days uh, as well. But I, I don't know. I just felt like with Forest because for some reason I've always I've always enjoyed uh, watch. I really enjoyed watching you uh, last yeah. year under uh, was it was it Sabri? Um, and I, I really enjoyed. Yeah, I really enjoyed you, watching you. Lot and, wasn't you lot? You almost came to you lot, didn't it? 
Yeah, yeah. So we were last year when we got rid of Pearson and got relegated. We were mm. there, there were three the three press um, in the media. The three front runners were um, were, were um, Sabri, and then there was it was the Barnsley manager last season. Um, oh, what's his name? He's now he's now gone out to America. The, um, the, foreign, the foreign manager. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I've um, got his, his name now. People in the comments, do you know who who was Watford manager? People in the comments will know. People in the yeah. comments, who, who was Watford it, it manager? Was the, yeah, it was the Barnsley manager from last year. Barnsley manager, sorry, Barnsley yeah, manager. Yeah, so, so from last year. And then obviously Vladimir Ilic, who came in, he's been sacked. And now we've got Cisco Munoz and we're absolutely flying. So it's really good. But I don't know, I just felt like, do you know, like I remember last year something that was that your right hand side. I remember Matty Cash and I think it was might have been Joe Lolly as well. Joe. Were absolutely yeah. terrifying to play against and and that, that that threat just kind of seemed to have gone. I think I, I said to you the standouts for me today for you lot. I thought Christie did all right on the right hand side. He's no Matty Cash. It was weird because Christie has been getting loads of criticism, loads of criticism, and I thought out of all the eleven players, all the players that could play for today, he was like one of yeah. the players that stood out, but. Thought, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry, fans. I'm not saying that he was fantastic, but I'm saying he was just a player that was just better than any others. So yeah, I, I think I think for me as well, particularly from a Watford perspective, I just feel like you know, except for a couple of nervy moments, when we go one nil up, we just don't look like we're going to concede because our defence is absolutely rock solid. Particularly mm-hmm. at home, we've got the best home record in England at the moment. Mm-hmm. Sorry, and um. And uh, like you know, Serial to Tristan Kong at the back were just. I know they didn't really have much to do, but they were just solid generally. And except for a little scare at the end when Lyle Taylor scored, but yeah, we we just as you say, we didn't really have to break sweat today, and we were really comfortable throughout. Mm. Um, so last two questions, Sam. Um, yeah. Watford um, top six, or do you think you get top two? It's a really difficult one. Um, I think yeah, Gerhard Struber. That's the that's, name. That's, that's, the, one, name. that's, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, he's out in America now. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's a really difficult one because we we seem to be putting forward some sort of form now, and something that's something we've lacked throughout the whole of this season. Uh, you know, six wins and seven now, and we got a couple. The reason I'm going to say we're not going to get top two is because of our injury situation and also because of our running. So we still have to play Cardiff away next. We have to go to Middlesbrough away. We have to go to Norwich away, Brentford away, and Swansea at home, Reading at home as well mm. on top of that we got the derby Luton away and then we got oh you'll, you'll win you'll win them you'll win them it's just it's just a very it's just a very difficult run in and that's mm. why I'm, I'm I'm gonna say I think we're probably just gonna miss out and then from the playoffs it's anyone's game I was actually I was thinking for some reason you know it's difficult to see who will finish in the top six but if Barnes mm. get in there I, I just fancy them I just feel like the underdog story will just mm. carry them through so it's interesting it's the championship anything can happen Mm. Um, right, I'm thinking about Forest. Like I've, I've told all the rival channels, like Forest have got the worst. We've had the worst. We've got the worst running for the next six games. Right. Today we lost to Watford. Uh, we've got two. We've got next Reading, Brentford, Norwich. Who's in the top half? Do you think Forest will stay up? Yes or no? First of all, you need to do us a favour by being in those teams. But <laughs> I, I think I think you will. I, th- I think you probably have just enough. I think. It looked like you were relatively comfortable, but after watching you today and also I didn't realise so many teams below you have games in hand and mm. Rotherham now have the extra one because their game was off today, wasn't it, against Brentford? Yeah. So it, it'll be really interesting um, to see if you do stay up. I think you will. I think you probably do just have enough with Chris Hughes and we're probably able to, you know, scrap scrappy 1-0 wins. But mm. it's definitely, from a, from a neutral perspective here, it's not going to be a season for Forest fans to remember. And, Probably the sooner over it's be- uh, the sooner it's over the better in your eyes. Yeah, yeah. Um, before you, Sam, uh, I know you've got um, you've got a YouTube channel called WD18 Fan Channel. Um, put a plug on your channel so people can find it and subscribe. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's uh, it's run by my mate Jacob Colshaw. Um, we're on all social media channels and, and on YouTube as well. WD18 Fans. We do previews, match reactions, a couple of interviews with players as well. Uh, it's been doing really well recently, so we'd appreciate it if you could go and have a look. What, what I'll do, people, because I've, I've, I've asked Rush this, I'll put his link in below. So after the channel, please go and f- um, subscribe to his channel. Like they have their fantastic work. Uh, I was on their channel the other day. Uh, so please as well, can you put, I will put the link in, subscribe to the channel. Um, Sam, 
Thank you for coming on. I thought I, 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 you, I, I, I was that close to texting saying, oh, I can't bother to do it. Well, that, <laughs> that would have been so of me. Uh, do, do you know what? There are a lot of teams that, that what have played against this season. I've been like, oh, I really don't like this lot. Like, you know, I think of Bournemouth. I think of who else? They've just been quite a few. And I, I really like Forest. I, I've always had, for some reason, a bit of a soft spot towards them. And I think it's because... One of my first Watford games I remember watching was a 2-2 draw, uh, sorry, a 4-2 loss at the City ground. We went 2-0 up and our yes, Gabriel yes. Angela for us an absolute screamer. So I don't know why, two, for some yeah. reason. He scored, he scored two, didn't he? Yeah, he scored two. He got, he, we I'm went 2-0 like, up and then we lost 4-2 against you people, lot. So. People in the comments, remember that game? Because I think it, it was it. It was Mackey, Cox, Henderson and Cox. Yes, I, that game. Yes, yeah, I remember that game. 4-2-4. Four, four, yeah. Yeah, that so, was, that was... I've always, I've always had, you know, I, I look at Forest fondly, and you know, hopefully we're not in the same league as you next year, but we'll be, uh, we'll be, I'll be looking out for your results. Yeah. Uh, Sam, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very thank much you, for, uh, for taking time for coming on. Like I said, subscribe to Sam, and uh, thank you for taking time, Sam, to come on. No worries. Take care. See you later. Take care. Take care. To you. Uh, so that's Sam. I will put, like I said, we'll put the link in the well um, in a minute. I'll, I'll be getting um, Matthew. And another, I got, I'm going foreign this time. I'm going American. Um, so people, um, before I get Matthew and, oh, who's the other one? I keep forgetting who's the other one. Uh, where is it? Where is he? I saw he's in the comments somewhere. Where is it? Uh, Adrian. Adrian, yeah, they're coming on. Um, I'm start. you know what? I'm going to play ratings. Um, so before they come on, I put, what would you give Samba out of 10? Um, Samba, I don't know. Uh, he didn't. He didn't really do. I'll give. I'll give him a five, Samba. Um, because I think, like I said, he, he didn't really. He didn't really much, do much, did he? If I, if if I'm honest, but is what it is. Um, defense, Christie. I thought Christie was the best person out of, out of the team. If I'm honest. So much stick he's had going forward, he was, he was, he was all right, but defense wise, again, consider. So I'll give him a six. Uh, Figueredo, uh, I'm gonna give him a five. Same with Warrell, I'll give him a five as well. Uh, Bong, I thought it was poor. The first, the goal that he considered, um. His defender was poor. He was actually like, a, "What's he doing?" So I'm giving him a four as well. Ryan Yates, um, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to criticize Yates. I think he was, he, he wasn't good today. Um, so Ryan Yates will get a four for me. Gardner, not his, not his game at all. Uh, what wasn't good enough? Wasn't good enough. Um, so I'm going to give Gardner. A five, uh, anti knockout. Not good enough again. I just don't think he's he was poor. I think he was poor. Um, who else want to give? Um, I don't know. Knockout a four, Krinovich. I'll stay into Craig since the, since the Derby game. What's he done? Keep in the comments. What's he done? What's he What's he done? I can't. I, I ain't got. Yeah, people in the comments. Do, do, do am I am I being harsh on him, Kurnovich? I don't think I am. Not. I just I think he's he's not done much for us since he's been, come back on his road from Benfica. So I'm giving him number three. Freeman, I'll give him four. And Murray, he's isolated. Like he didn't, he didn't get no support from that midfield at all. So I felt sorry for Murray. So I'm, I'll, I'll give him five, if I'm honest. Uh, the bench, what did the bench do? Joe Lolly didn't come on and do, he didn't do well. So I'm gonna give Lolly a five. Who else? Come on, Kafu. Um, come on. He, he had a shot. He had a decent shot on him. To be fair, 
So I'll give Kafu six. Taylor, like uh, I think you Taylor, come on. And that's the thing I've seen people criticizing Taylor on you on Twitter, on social media, and he's top, he's a top scorer, but he's not getting he's not getting he's not getting game time. So how can you criticize someone who's not getting much game time? Hooten prefers Murray. So I'm, I'll I'll give Taylor five. Um I know the other one come on for us. No, is it Abbey is it Abbey Abbey come on for us? I don't fact I know who it was now. Abbey Abbey come on for us and uh, I can't remember Abbey Abbey to prefer but also give him um, a five. Well um I'm just waiting for um Matthew and Adrian. Adrian, are you ready? Come on, let's get ready to rumble. Um people, if you if you are got any questions, um if you and if you want to come on, if you want to come on, the link the link, link is below. Um, the email, email me, and I'll send you the link so you can come on and have your thoughts. Um, here he is. Here's Matthew to give his thoughts. Um, and listen to me. I'm not going to criticize Colbert because he'll kill me. Um, <laughs> uh, Matthew, <laughs> give him a chance. Oh, we gotta, give him. Got to pick him first. <laughs> Um, Matthew, sum that up today. Oh, well, I, I, the selection was all wrong for me. I was, I wasn't very hopeful from the start. Um, first half was absolute shit show, basically, wasn't it? And uh, second half improved, but I don't know. It was just, it was just disappointing. I mean, I mean on, on paper, a one nil defeat. Sounds fair enough. It's it's expected, isn't it? Really, but this, this is the thing, like like we're not getting hammered. That's the thing. We're not getting hammered. It's yeah. we're, we're always we're always losing like one nil or two one. Like yeah. the, the, the only team we've got battered was Brentford at home. That's the only time we've got battered. And yeah, it's, just... it's frustrating because because I honestly don't think there's there's a very good league this year and. Um... You know, anyone could you could have walked it. You know, could have done well, walked it. But you know, anyone could have got promoted this season. It was a great opportunity, and I, I don't know. We're making it difficult for ourselves. I just think the selection's wrong. He's not using the squad. I mean, I I mm. don't know. Mm. I, 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 similar <laughs> as last year, neg just too negative. Mm. It was that the consensus with the previous people. Um, you, know, you know what, Matthew, I'm just being another Forest fan, and this is Adrian from America. Okay. Yeah. There's another one. Hello, Adrian. Hey, how are you doing, guys? Oh, uh, Adrian, this is Matthew. Matthew, this is Adrian. Hello. Um, Hello. Adrian, before we talk, whereabouts are you from? I'm actually from York. Okay. Yeah, been over here for like 12 years now. Um, yeah, but God, I do miss uh, going to some of the games. And I miss, you know, especially with COVID, nothing's going on over here. We're not actually seeing any games with the American sports. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing, though, is actually helping out a lot out over here. I really appreciate well, it. Well, thank, thank you very much. Especially with Craig and mine. They are very listen, to me, listen to me. Don't mention that guy. Listen, <laughs> he, he's not relevant. So he's not, he's, we're not talking about Craig. If you talk about Craig, you're kicked out. Okay, <laughs> Craig, if you watch Craig, go turn off. Um, <laughs> Adrian, I was just saying to Matthew, how do you sum out the game and how did you sum that game? Man, it's, we can't get in the box. We can't score. Okay. We just got no strikers. Um, midfield, we, we got some serious problems on midfield. Defense today kind of let us down a bit. Um, Sambo, okay, got a kick to the head. I was surprised he came back on. Um, he did have a big gash on the side of the head. Um, but just again, every time it gets a box, it's just there's no plan. Um, I was really disappointed with just the attacking force, just everything. It was so disappointing. Um, believe me, I got up really early to watch this game, and I was really excited, thinking, oh, we'll at least try and get a draw. But I honestly feel like there is something going on behind closed doors. The heads are down even before the game starts. Mm. Yeah. I have major. And I would create a few times on Twitter, on Instagram, like, oh, let's get a new squad. We don't want that. We've got to stay with the players that we got. Um, I really do fear that if we go down, 
back into the battle that mm. Chris will be fired. And I don't want that. We've got to keep going with the team we have and with the management team. But every time they come on, the heads are down before the, start, the game started. Um, that's my opinion, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Matthew, like, you're, as everyone knows, Matthew is a massive Cobat fan. Um, <laughs> and he's, I, tried, I tried to hide it. <laughs> and I said to you, Matthew, on, on Friday, yeah. it, it, this was a Cobat game. Yeah. And he's not even getting a sniff. Him, maybe so. Um, my turn. They're well, not they're even the getting two, a chance. They're, they're the two best midfielders we've got. They can pass the ball. They can press the ball. You know, yeah. uh, we've seen it coming for weeks with Bong. You know, he, he doesn't engage with people, which is kind of fair enough, because if you're 30, 40, whatever age he is, you can't afford to do that. But he got totally exposed today, and it, it was coming. I, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah. It's hard. It, 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 every professional footballer at the club is going to be confused by what's going on, I think. The ones that are in the team probably don't know why they're being picked and would rather not be picked. And the ones that aren't, vice versa. It doesn't make sense. You know, if nothing else, you've got to use the massive squad we've got, try and keep them happy and, and use it to our advantage. It's, it's not working to our advantage at all, is it? We've got no one around the fringes that is yeah. useful. I mean, someone like Mighton, like you say, is someone you want to kind of nurture, but he's not really being managed particularly well. You, you know, it, I don't know. I, I don't understand any of it. There's been... You know, so many weird. He seems to just do the same thing. He's got like a, like a, a a script, and he sticks to it every time. Bringing on Blackie, mm. uh, you know, play Blackie yeah, from the what, start. You know this what I know. I was, I was about to ask you, Adrian Matthew, as well. Like me and Craig, we have this. Uh, we get mad. We bring mm. Blackie on, mm. and uh, was it, I, 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 I do apologize. I did. I did say I did come on, but I didn't come on. It was Blackie come on. Mm. Why? I'm just. Why are we bring players like Black it on? I just, like Adrian as well. Mo, like mo, um, what's his name? Taylor. Taylor. Like Taylor, Taylor, Taylor is not. Is not. He's being criticised on social media. Like, yeah, he's not getting, blah, but he's not getting a chance. Like, yeah, what's your yeah. opinion on that? No, I, I honestly agree. Um, you know, I played football my time, and when you come on, uh, like twenty minutes to go, it takes at least five to ten minutes to get warmed up. You know, and try and get into the action of the game and try and get the feel of the game. I honestly feel like Taylor should be brought on next game for sure. Be brought on, get the first, get him on straight away. Um, mm. Bring him on the last 10 minutes, hoping that he's going to perform. Like the goal today, okay, he was probably 20 meters offside, but you know, it was a good goal. Mm. Um, and every time he does come on, okay, last week he didn't have a good chance, but got to bring him on. First half, just bring a guy on, give him a chance. And um, the other players, again, I know we just keep going back to them. Um, I just, every time, if you look, actually, you go back and look at some of the replays, you could see some arguing going on, um, especially on the throw ins. Um, I can't think of the guy's name, but I'll just go back and look at the replay again and I'll email you the name and look at the point. But they are, they're arguing between one another. And that's, mm. that's worrying some. I wouldn't, pick, I wouldn't pick pick Knockhart just for his approach to the game. He plays by himself. Every yes, game. He, he's just making a show reel. That's all he's doing. That's, that's his project. He has his own no, yeah. He yeah. plays his own separate game. He yeah, waves his arms about. He's, he, uh, uh, there's several players like that who, who just, they're, they're self-obsessed. But there's one you thing know. I do like about Knockhart. He has passion. And... Mm. You got to miss that is missing from our team right now. He does run all over the field, and unfortunately, he does have his own plan. And none of the other players know what his plan is. Mm. Uh, but I don't I, know. I, um, I I don't know. Like that goal was disgraceful. How he was standing there. You know, we're sitting at home, and we're virtually getting up off our off our seats and putting in more effort to go and defend that because you could see what was going to happen. Yeah. He's standing there, and that half of the pitch, it's him. And he lets the guy stroll past him and it was in the back of the net and he still hadn't moved. He still hadn't moved. You know, he could have walked. He could have done dolly steps and caught up with the guy by the time he controlled it. It's just unprofessional, it's, you know. And to think we, we didn't pick 
Carvalho because we were worried about he didn't, him not tracking back enough. Right, you know what, Matthew, completely, you just read my mind. And yeah. I was about to ask you both, Matthew and Adrian, right? I was talking to Craig again about Carvalho and Kronovic. Let me ask Matthew, you ask, you ask this, Matthew. What's he done that has changed Forrest? What's he, what's he done? What, Kovinovic? Yeah, what's he done? Well, I, personally, I'm, he I'm kind of quite... quite he, he's, he's an all right player. He's not He's not Carvalho, I don't think. I don't mean his quality. Uh, he's kind of... He, he's helped balance the midfield. He's been all right. Personally, the three additions have improved us. I thought Garner played brilliantly today and he impresses me more and more. But I, still, I think he's playing out of position. I'd have brought mm. on Cole back and let Garner... Go forward a little bit more. Yeah, the but the whole in, blend in, of the midfield's wrong. I just, I just, I, just, I personally think that I think what game was it? I think it was like I said, the derby game. Since mm -hmm. the derby game with Filip Kudovic, I, I, I just don't think like you, you mentioned the balance and all that. Mm -hmm. I just don't think mm -hmm. he, he hasn't done much just to support Murray because Murray is thirty-seven years old. He like mm -hmm. I, personally, I would have, I would have just. Rest took left him and left and started Taylor because we can't keep relying on, on Murray. He's 37 years old and he's playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. Give Taylor mm. a chance. And then you see people on social media slating Taylor. Like, in, he's not what do you want to, what do you no. want to do? That's no, what he that, can do. But, but that's what management is making the best of what you've got. And I think we're mm. making the worst of what we've got. We're, we're yeah. persisting with people. Who are doing nothing? Like, how can you pick Freeman? He's kicked the ball well mm. once ever since he's joined us. If that's all you got to do, give me a go. I reckon I can <laughs> score one from thirty yards. But if you you give me twenty games, I will do it. You know, eventually. But you know, it, it, and I don't think you're doing him any favors. I don't. You know, I don't want to kind of blame him. He's being left out there to dry. You know, and he he's not on. He's not warranting his place. Uh, you've got to, you know, management is, is getting them right for the game and putting the best players out there that can perform and managing the whole squad. And I, I don't know. I just think he's he's got one script and he just sticks to it, doesn't he? I, it baffles mm. me. You, you know, mm. like after today, you've got to pick Cole back for the next game. You've got to. How can you watch that midfield and honestly think the guy who was captain who you picked for, I don't know, 10 games, 15 games, whatever it was at the beginning of the season, you're not going to pick him. He's now sixth best player just because he got kicked in the ankle. How does that work? This mm. makes no sense to me. Mm. Um, I was to say that Freeman got in really weird positions. He seems to always be out. I don't know. That guy. But you're right. I, I call him um, the good-looking Craig. Um, I wasn't really... <laughs> um, Bye, all right, door. <laughs> Maybe the tall uh, crazy then we call him. Um, yeah, that's what I get. Um, Adrian, yeah. let, me, Adrian, let me tell you straight, Adrian. This is the last time you're coming on. Don't ever praise Craig on this channel again. This, that's not fair. Don't even praise it. It's awful. That's all I'm talking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carry on. Come right. on. Yeah, um, regarding um, Philippe, he was the symptoms, you know, with human. Yeah, um, I'll keep going back to it again, but I know it's, we're going over and over and over and over again. But yeah, Freeman, um, I'll definitely need to I'll get Taylor on. I know I said it again, I'll say it again. I need Taylor to come on next game. Mm. Uh, what would you else bring on for the next game? Let's think, like, where's Grubbin? Like, has Grubbin got a slight knock? It's even well, like we've had a. We've had a lot of these small knocks that end up being out for about two months, haven't we? You know, like, not, McKenna, not, not, yeah, not, rib, not rib, for, injured, not injured, sort of thing. Like Ribeiro had it. You know, what frustrates me. Like I've been, mean, you hear it all the time about Harry Otter. Harry Otter's back in training Monday. He's not. He's not even in the twenty-five man squad. Like, yeah, very and nice. you hear rumours and gossip about. He's, fill up, he's, he's done this, he's done this, um, and he's not going to play for the first year again. But we've got, we got players like, I don't know, we've still got Sal. Where, where's Sal? Where's, <laughs> we've, got, we've got so many players that you can, can play in midfield. And, yeah. and as everyone knows, these next five games are, <laughs> the four games, 
got Reading, Brentford, Norwich. The hard games. The hard games. And I'm not saying that people, I'm not saying that we're getting relegated. I don't I don't think we will get relegated because there's, there's so many poor teams below us. Um, yeah, who's going to start next season? You look at our team today, That's let's say that's our best team. Who's going to be there next season? Samba, Figs, or McKenna, Wall. There's a lot that I'd, aren't. The fullbacks, no. Yeah. The midfielders, okay, Yates, but the rest of them, no, not really. Up front, not really. And you know, unless you're going to sort of, I don't know. Mm. Um. Well, next question. Like I said, um, there's so many players. Like I, I've, I've seen our players out of contract at the window and. I know there's Dawson. He, he'd definitely be gone. Um, who else is that? Who else is that contract? At the end of the season. Do you know R- Ribeiro, Christie? Rib- is Ribeiro? What Ribeiro is that? Yeah, so, Christie. Lord, the hell, man, we're, we're going mad. Um, so what? 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 Oh, I, I, I don't think he'd, he'd be at Forest again next season. If I'm honest, but what? so what yeah. Yeah, but he's he's arguably our best player. You know, people are complaining, oh, he can't play every game. Well, in fact, it'd be nice to have the chance. He won't get, you know, he doesn't get picked, does he? <laughs> you know, apart from anything mm-hmm. else. You know, he only needs to play one in three and he'll do more than most people that play three games. But there you go. Even, even, even Abiobi's out of contract, I think he is. Yeah, Abiobi, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, Obviously, no, sure. Murray. But we've, don't Murray. worry, we've got, we've got De Costa and we've got, uh, oh, Ianu, who got, who's got about three years left? We've got two years left of Jao. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all these players we can't play. Heffler's out of contract. He's out of contract as well. Bloody hell! Um, I don't know where to start. Like these next, like these next four games. Like Adrian, how many points do you think we need in this last, in, in this next four games? Mm. It's so big games. Well, today I wanted a draw. Because I did actually put this down on my paper that we were actually going to lose this game. I wanted a 1 1. I said at the beginning of the game, I wanted a 1 1. Next game. That's uh, Reading. Yeah, Reading. Against the next five games, I'll be happy with um, with three points. Honest. I, I really see us struggling the next five games, especially against Reading. So that's why I think, like all the discussions we've had about the players and the happy. I kind of put Reading down as a loss, so why don't we just change the whole squad? Um, yeah. That's fresh, you know? Let's try it. If it, you know, if it goes really bad, let's go back to the other you know, script that Chris keeps coming up with. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know what I mean? Just try something different. Mm, what, are, yeah. uh, what positions do you think, like the, I know on the comments, a lot of people are saying 4-4-2 or 3 5 two. what do you think is the best for uh, us going forward, especially for the next game? Go on, Matthew. You answer that. You answer that, Matt. I, I'm not. I couldn't even be, couldn't even think about positions. I just like the best players to get picked to start with, and then worry about how they can play afterwards. You know, Listen, I, people in the comments. Matthew wants Cobax, and that's that's all Matthew's ball about. No, 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 no. Doesn't. Honestly, it's not. It's not. It's uh, you could turn the, the t- you could turn the squad sheet upside down and just pick the ones that who never get a chance. Who, you know, yeah. For me, virtually, you could do that because he's he's given the the ones in possession every opportunity, and mm. this is what we saw today. If that's them, after all the patience you've had with them, uh, I don't know, you know. And I don't really want to blame the players, but you shouldn't be allowing like Knockhart to do his own thing. You know, yeah. is that is that what you want? Do you want a team with a bloke on the wing who just mm. waves his arms and and you know? <laughs> wanders around, he should be have, having a rocket up his backside and, you know, unless that's the plan. I don't know. That's what I don't get. Uh, you know, I like Chris Hume. I want him to succeed. I don't want him to... to do, you think, do, you, no, do, do, do you think, do you think he, he's, the right, he's the right man to get Forrest up? Because, I, as you know, as everyone everyone says, when he took over from Brighton, when he, when he went to Brighton, he went to Birmingham, then he went to that club... In a poor position, and it took him his second season to get his to get his players, and then he got Brighton up. Hmm. In, p- people in the comments as well. Do you think Chris Hutton as well is the man to get Forest up? Matt, do you think he's the man to get us up? On paper, he definitely is. But um, we've got our same problem where you keep changing the manager, and the manager has the old manager's players, 
And I don't know. I, I don't think he's make, making a very good effort with getting the best out of what we've got. Um, unless we say, OK, we're going to churn the squad repeatedly, uh, it will never end, will it? We've seen it so many times. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, I honestly don't know. I wish I had something I could say, well, yeah, he's doing that right, he's doing that right. But mm. no, okay. we're, not, we're, we're having a bad run. I just don't see, he's not a responsive kind of manager, is he? He's, he's the kind of guy that has his ideas and just sticks to them. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but mm. I think he's kind of wrong. And if you're in a hole, don't, you know, don't you know, keep digging. And I think, <laughs> I, I think he's just digging. Mm. Adrian, what do you think, Adrian? Do you think he, he's the right man to get us up? So the last you know runs we've had, I was like, oh god, we've got a good chance to get in the playoffs. And the way the past two weeks, the past games, I've been like, I'm glad we're not going to get promoted because the way we're playing, we'll probably end up with the worst record. Um, which I know Derby have got that right now. Um, yeah, but, yeah, which is great. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it's. I think he's not. We just got to give him one more year. Um, mm. My theory is that with the games we've got coming up right now, we're going to be go back down the table, back into the battle again. And, you know, you know what history is? We were back in relegation, and if we, if we survive that by one game or three points, I honestly think they will probably fire him, which I think is the worst mistake. We've got to keep him. Um, get the team back up. We've got to get in the mid-table maybe next season or maybe top of the table next season. Build a team. Right now, as you say, we haven't got it. Um, we have a lot of players that are not, you know, coming onto the team, mm. um, which I don't understand. Um, especially with the players today, I would, if Brian Clough was around, he was right. All you guys are bench and putting, you know, other guys on the field next game. This is the thing, right? This is the thing, right? Like, we've got a massive squad on paper. Mm. If one player doesn't, if one player doesn't play good, you take, you change him, and. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Matthew, we've got, we've got, we've got Colbert, we've got Sam Bissell, we've got Harry mm. Arthur. Mm. Why, like, it's, it's so frustrating. Like, I don't understand why like, Alex Martin, like, he, he scored the winner. What game was it when he won 1 0 at City Ground? Was it Millwall? Yeah, whichever one it was, that uh, quick fling. Yeah, yeah. He, we won 1 0. We win 1 0. And then mm. next game, he, he's on the bench. And then mm -hmm. the last, the last two games, he doesn't, he's not really in the, in the squad. Mm. It's just, that's the baffling thing. But I don't, I don't understand thing, why. The whole thing's it's, baffling. You it, know, some play. you need to pl treat every single player the same. You know, if they don't play well, they don't play. And if, if they all understand that, you know, it, it's not rocket science, but it seems like there's certain players that can play however they like and they still get picked. They can play for themselves. They can, you know, not turn up. Uh, they, they get picked relentlessly. Other players done nothing wrong. They never get picked. Mm. You know, it's if it's on merit, everyone will buy into it. I, I, mm. I just don't. I, I don't know. I don't know whether he's just, you know, scared to change anything, or he just honestly doesn't see it. I'd love to know. And and regardless mm. of that, it, unless we're simply just trying to avoid relegation, which I think we're we're better than that. We should be yeah. building for next season, and we shouldn't just be relying on all our loan players and, and mm. not having an eye on what's going to happen next season. Because we're not going to have, you know, Gavin's not going to suddenly get better. He's not going to become the best striker in the league again out of nowhere. Mm. You know, we're, we're going to piss off all the players we've got, we're going to still have, and all mm. the loan ones we're not going to keep, are we? So mm. it's going to be a huge job next season. And, he won't be able to, you know, he should be using this time to get ready for next season because we're not going to get relegated, we're not going to get promoted. Mm. Um, Matthew, well, like a question, like, I, I, like, I, was, I was talking to Craig about it, right? What what players in your eyes that we need to get rid of? Because, like I said, we've got so many players in the team, and like, what players would you like say don't come for us again? Me, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, there's there's going to be a load of them leaving anyway, isn't there? I mean, I, I don't mm. think, you know, you can't get rid of players, you know, unless someone wants them. And there aren't many players in our whole mm. squad that people want, really. Mm. Um, so I think that problem, you know, is a separate issue. The main thing is don't buy, don't buy a load of players you're not going to use. I mean, it's crazy 
buying a left back and then playing a few games, getting a card, and then suddenly he goes from being the best one to the worst one, apparently, and you have to loan him out and you've still got two years left of his contract. It's just mm. insane. Whoever signed him has to say, no, no, we think he's decent. You know, they signed him because he's decent and he should be you know, persevered with to an extent, shouldn't he? You can't just shuffle the cards. There has to be a, a proper plan. Personally, I'd like to see the likes of Fauna, Preston, Mighton, like you said, Brennan Johnson. I'd like to see them be given a mm. lot more chance, even between now and the end of the season. But mm. going forward and spending money on a, a proper striker, a young striker, two young strikers. Swan scored today. Swan scored today. Brennan Johnson scored today. Jerry, Jordan Gabriel yeah. performed well. I bet you any money these players won't, they won't get a chance next season. I bet you any money. None, none of them will. We'll, we'll be getting some bloke like De Costa who no one's ever heard of, who's 29, that's never been that good, hoping he's good. And, you know, he won't. He probably won't be. And we'll loan him out and we'll give him a three-year contract and we'll loan him out after five minutes. You know, it's, it's, it's incoherent, isn't it? You know, mm. just just back a, a few quality players, give your kids a chance because they can, you know, they can't be that much worse than the few of the people who are, who are playing. And then yeah. at least you find out. And then if they if they're good, you're up, aren't you? And if they're not good, they're no worse than what we've we've got playing at the moment. So no. make it competitive. Make them all engaged. You know, at the moment. I don't know. I, I can. I can't imagine anyone in the squad understands what's going on. Really, mm -hmm. um, Adrian. I said. I said to Matt, what play? What players would you get rid of um, for the next for next season? Get rid of. Well, like you say, most of them on loan, so we've got no worries there. Um, but my question to you was: How I don't get any news on the uh, youth team. How are they doing? Because back old days, we used to bring players up for the youth team. How, how are they doing? Yeah. All right, or? Um, I know there's been like Swans on loan to Port Vale, like he scored today. I know they lost two one yesterday against who did they lose? No, they lost one nil oh, to Birmingham. Yeah, I know there's one, there's one, there's one good player. I think it's Canute. Have you heard of him, Matthew Canute? Yeah, I, I I've never seen him play, obviously, because he's, he's only a good, just arrived. He's, but he's, he's he's really rated, isn't he? And he's McGarth, really rated McGann and stuff. He's, he's yeah. meant to be decent as well. There's a few, you know, and we should give these guys a chance. They should be on the bench next season. Yeah. You know, they're, they're sort of an 85th in line at the moment. So it's just yeah. ridiculous. We, you know. The, the 23s are top, Craig just said. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the, the side, but they have, they have mm. got a few good players. Like, I think, like McGann, he was on loan at mm. Oxford, one team. But, he, yeah. but he's come back. He's come back now from injury. You know, he's, okay. no, he was injured. No, he's injured at Oxford. So he had he had oh, to come okay. back to Forest. So okay. his, his season his season's dead. Um, well, yeah, there, there is quite a few. Who's the other one? Dale Taylor, the Northern Ireland player as well. He he's um, yeah. he he was going goal top one, but I don't think he he's not he's not ready for first team. Oh, like I think he he he'll be, I think he'll be gone alone next season, and, that, and that's in my opinion. Um, I've got a question. Oh, no, another one. Uh, very harsh on Kernwich door. Not good today, but he's been one of our best players since he's come on. Um, Matthew, what, like, what, 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 am I am I wrong about Kronovich? I don't know. I, yeah, um, I, it's my opinion. It's my opinion. I, I, I think it's it's like when you people jump down the um, things his throat when he makes a mistake. It's all part of the job. You, you're number ten or you're number eight, whatever you want to call it. He's not going to play brilliantly every game. Else he'd be playing in the Premier League, wouldn't he? You know, he'd be playing in the Champions League and all that kind of stuff. He's a, he's a handy footballer. He's quite good. Is he better than Silver? I don't know. He's, he's on a par. You know, he's personally, I don't quite think so. But he's a decent player. I think he's a good. But, but he hasn't done nothing. Like, like he hasn't done, like, like right. Like this, people. This is my opinion. Like he hasn't done nothing. He has like since since he's like yes, he can put. He can play. He can, he's more of a. He can play number two, like he's number ten, but he's more. He plays like a, a, a midfield three, alongside Yates or Garner or Cafu. But he just he, he hasn't done like he like a what he doesn't like wow, like wow he's done this done that. That's that's me. I just don't think he's yeah. But look look all our midfield. When did any of them do anything? In really was particularly skillful. Garner's did some nice, neat things, to be fair to him. But it's been about six six or seven games. None of them's done a decent... Today, you, it's, there's some horror passes and yeah, losing the ball. You know, it was a shambles. 
It was absolute shambles. You know, you, you go back six games, there's been nothing that you'd have got up off your seat for if you were there. Uh, I, I honestly wonder if, if you needs a crowd to sort of groan a few times to help him see yes. what's in front of him, you know, because maybe that's what's missing. I don't know. I really, uh, there's nothing, is there? There's no, there's no, there's nothing that kind of makes sense and joins up, really, is there? And to be fair, actually, the last two or three games, I felt like they've, they've maybe got to know each other a little bit better, and they start w did start to pass the ball around a few times, but it's minimal. It's really minimal. Mm. Um, Adrian, yes, are you like? This is the last question for you, Adrian. Are you worried about? The season to finish, or do you think we'll be fine? We, we, we won't go down. What's what's your opinion so far on the season? Um, I know. Yeah, I am concerned. These next five, oh, yeah. Games, yeah. These next five games, oh, yeah. they, you know, our heads go fully down. I know you keep saying um, the bottom teams are really bad teams, but we actually I've seen some of those games, and they do like they they look like they're fighting for their survival. And yeah. I feel like Chris is Chris is playing for a draw every game, and one point or what is it's not going to save us. It's just not. Mm. It's not, no, not no, you, you can see, you can see us doing what we did at the end of last season at the other yeah. end of the table, yeah. can't you? You can yeah. see us thinking, oh, we only need one point to be safe, and yeah. and we won't just go and w win the next game. We'll try yeah. and draw it. We'll try and draw the next five games, yeah. and we'll end up needing one point. On the last day of the season. Look at the last two fixtures. I think it's Birmingham and uh, Press. Well, whoever Preston. it is, it's the two. Yeah, it's the teams right at the bottom. So you don't want to be anywhere near them. You don't want to be six mm. points away from them at all, because mm. they can pull the rug out from under your feet. We can't be complacent. Mm. We we should be going out trying to win every game uh, and playing like you want to win every game. It's it's you know, we should be able to play with one one uh, hopping. And and mm. not get relegated in this league. You know, we at the beginning of the season, people were saying we were buying the league. We've got a ridiculous squad. It's so unfair. We can have so many substitutions, and we bring on people like Blackett, where you know, <laughs> when we need to score a goal. That, that, that baffled me. But when I think what game was it? But not, garbage, but, garbage game, Matthew. Yeah, but, garbage. but not not once every game. You know, not once every yeah. single game. Bring on, you know, do something imaginative. Bring on. I don't know, Cafu or Colback or someone like that, and stick three people up front if you need to. If you're losing, you know, we, it's not like we're trying to keep the goal difference down. It's ridiculous. I, I, I don't. There's so mm. little that kind of makes sense to me. Mm. Um, right, last but not least, lads, um, your rating, like who's the best, who's the worst, um, Agent? Mm. Who's who's your worst player for today? <laughs> <laughs> who's the worst? Who's the worst? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, worst player today, um, that'd be Bong. He was just outclassed today. He just he looked slow. He looked like he'd been on the on the beers last night. He just he just looked terrible. Um, and actually, for the best player, I'll give that to Cafu. As soon as he came on, there was a change. I know you, <laughs> I know, but yeah, things changed. Um, the rest of them. I couldn't even get above five. I think the rest of them I just gave four because I felt sorry for them. Um, <laughs> I had four, I had two. Um, who would you give two? two? <laughs> <Who? Bob. laughs> Bob, two. People in the comments, who do you think, who, who did you rate in the comments? Um, Mark, who's your, who's your worst player? Well, well knockout purely for attitude because you can't have a prima donna like that. You know, you just can't allow that that goes against the whole team ethic for me i you know i wouldn't allow it in a kids team um so i'd, I'd give it to him purely on on his approach to the game best players i thought garner played well again and i'd say warrell was the best player um you know he, he's he, he's always half decent and he seemed to be trying you know trying to do two or three people's job today so mm -hmm. fair play to him definitely um matthew and adrian it's been a, thank you very much for coming on and thank you very much adrian from yeah. america for coming on and like i said if you come on again please don't praise craig please because his head will go massive so but that's but yeah yes buddy i'll do my but, best uh, but yeah matthew and adrian thank you very much 
for um, coming on. Um, Thank Matthew, you. I need, I need, uh, Matthew, I'm going to message you when I've done this stream. I need to tell you something. Is that okay? Okay. All right. All yeah, right. I'll, I'll allow it. I'll, I'll take you off the block list. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, uh, boys Adrian and Matthew thank you very much for coming on all right. take care take care Love cheers Ben cheers. take care cheers uh, oh god uh, but yeah um, thank you very much everyone for coming on um, another poor performance again um, but like before I do go like I said tomorrow 10 o'clock the Lewis McGugan interview by myself is out tomorrow. Um, the link is below, so it is very interesting. I'll give you some things what we spoke about. We spoke about the um, his, his time at Forest, his Billy time with Billy Davis, the goals that he scored, and so more, so other things that we spoke about. Um, but yes, you cannot miss this. It was fantastic, fantastic interview I've done. It's, it's, it was one of my best interviews I've done. Don't get me wrong, the, all the interviews that I've done with Forest players, it's been fantastic. But this one just, it's it come out of nowhere. So um, it is a fantastic interview with Luce Mugan. So like I said, the link is below. So please, please, please put a reminder on it so you can watch it. <laughs> because like I said, it was a fantastic interview with Luce Mugan. Um Please, if you are new to this channel, hit the like button. Subscribe if you are new. Um, so tomorrow, Lewis McGowan interview is here at last. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully next week, like our next game is against uh, Reading. But the main one is Lewis McGowan tomorrow. See you tomorrow, everyone. And hopefully, if you do enjoy it, please put your comments in below. And if you did enjoy it or not, I'll see you tomorrow. Up the first.